Apple finally announced the new three nanometer chips for the Mac, the M3, the M3 Pro, and the M3 Max that go inside the new MacBook Pro and a new 24 inch iMac. But we didn't exactly get everything we thought we were going to get, did we? So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the new M3 chips, the new MacBook Pros, which one I'm probably gonna get, maybe I'll mention the 24 inch iMac and a rant about those tech leakers. So Apple finished up their scary fast October event and this was an event that was expected and then it was not expected at all. And then suddenly it was expected again. It was pretty weird. And in that event, they announced three new processors, updated MacBook Pros and an updated 24 inch iMac. So I'm going to talk about all of those real quick. And then I have a bit of a rant about tech leakers. And Apple did, of course, release three brand new chips. There's the M3, the M3 Pro, and the M3 Max. And those are Apple's first three nanometer chips built for the Mac desktops and laptops. And I think the first three nanometer chips in desktop laptops ever. The base M3 processor gets an eight core CPU and a 10 core GPU. The M3 Pro gets up to a 12 core CPU and an 18 core GPU. And the M3 Max gets up to a 16 core CPU and up to 40 GPU cores. And of course, Apple threw some wildly crazy ambiguous charts on the screen to show how much faster than they are, more so compared to the M1 versions than the M2 versions, which is kind of interesting. It seems like M2 is just going to fade into unexistence, sort of this middle ground or this just tiny little stepping stone to get from the awesome, amazing, revolutionary M1 all the way to the three nanometer M3s. And that's crazy because this M2 Max MacBook Pro was just released earlier this year and it's already being replaced by the M3 version. So the M2 is just going to fade into oblivion. But the M2 aside, the performance improvements of the M3 over the M1 versions and even the M2 versions is actually pretty impressive based on their really weird ambiguous charts. So I'm really curious to see how it actually performs day to day. My guess and what it looks like is we're looking at about a 15 to 20% increase in performance going from the M2 versions to the M3 versions. And that's still pretty darn good for a year over year update. Well, half year or part year over part year update. And there's different bidding options in the CPUs as well that are different from previous years. And one other thing that's interesting is the 12 core CPU in the M3 Max is six performance cores and six efficiency cores. But in the M2 Max and Pro, it was eight performance cores and four efficiency cores. So we're getting less performance cores in the M3 Pro and Max than we did in the M2 Pro and Max. So I'm really curious to see how that affects performance and what I do day to day. So I'm definitely going to be checking that out and wait just a moment and I'll tell you exactly which model I'm buying. And along with CPU updates, there's also GPU updates inside all of the M3 chips that include hardware ray tracing like we saw in the iPhone 15 Pro and the A17 Pro chip. Now, all of that performance for me is still kind of speculative because we have no idea how that performance is really going to help us or affect us or make gaming better because we haven't seen any games that actually support that yet. And Apple didn't bring any developers on stage to talk about the performance and how great their games run on the new Apple M3 chips because, well, I don't know. It seems like a lost opportunity. And that's, I guess, all I have to say about performance right now because I don't know how they're gonna perform against my M2 Max here. And all of those chips are now going inside the 14 inch MacBook Pro, including that base model M3 chip. That's right, now you can get a base model M3 14 inch MacBook Pro for $1599. And that means you get that ProMotion display, you get those amazing speakers, you get the better keyboard, you get the bigger trackpad, you get all these great things with the 14 inch MacBook Pro that you didn't get with the 13 inch MacBook Pro if you just needed the base M3 or M2 whatever chip. And there's really not a lot to complain about with that model. And the only thing that you're not going to get is going to be on that right side. And that's going to be that third Thunderbolt port. And on the regular M3, the ports on the other side are Thunderbolt 3 slash USB 4. And on the Pro and Max versions, it is going to be Thunderbolt 4. And what does that really mean to you? Absolutely nothing because those ports are still going to be 40 gigabits per second. And that's all you really care about. And that standard M3 MacBook Pro is going to come in silver or space gray, but of course, the Pro and the Max versions get the brand new Space Black. Yes, especially anodized aluminum that reduces fingerprints and blah, 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 blah. And it's black, so you know those are the real Pro laptops, not the Space Gray. It needs to be Space Black. And yeah, that does actually sound pretty cool. So like I said, there's a ton of different options with the processors in these new MacBook Pros. If you look at the 14 inch, you can get the base M3 with an eight core CPU, 10 core GPU. You can get a pro model with 11 cores and 14 core GPU, or you can get a pro model with 12 cores of CPU and 18 core GPU, or you can get to the max, which has 14 cores or, and 30 cores, or up to 16 cores and 40 cores. Like there's so many different options 
for the CPUs in these new MacBook Pros. And the real question is going to be just, well, which one am I gonna get? Well, if we look at what I'm using right now, I'm using the M2 Max MacBook Pro with the 12 core CPU. And if we go over to graphics, let's see, it is a 30 core GPU. And as I've said in my other videos, I think this is overkill for my needs. And I can actually get by with previously the base model M2 Pro MacBook Pros with bumping up the memory. I think the memory has been more my limiting factor than anything else. And in my current 14 inch MacBook Pro, I have 32 gigabytes of memory, which is kind of the base for what I need to do everything I need smoothly and still have a little bit of overhead for my regular daily activities, editing videos and regular work and whatnot. So the 14 inch M3 Pro is going to be my model. Now, of course, because I'm a pro, I'm going to be getting the new space black color to show everybody that I'm a pro. And when it comes to processor, I can get the bin down 11 core CPU with 14 core GPU, or I can go with the, the bigger pro model, the 12 core CPU and 18 core GPU. And which one am I gonna go with? Well, the bigger one, of course. Yep, I want those six performance cores and six efficiency cores and a 18 core GPU to help me power through my videos. And that starts at 2399. So let's see what other options we can add to that. And so for the 14 inch model, we can then go from the high end pro chip that I have up to an M3 max. And that's what I'm going to avoid this time. I don't need those extra GPU cores. I could probably use the extra CPU cores, but I don't need them. And going with the regular pro model should keep the heat down because that's one of the only issues I have with this laptop is that the M2 max just runs a bit warm and I feel it pretty frequently, no matter what I'm doing. I don't hear the fans or anything, but I feel the heat. So I think it'll be nice going with the regular Pro model with less heat for my regular everyday work. So now we're gonna scroll down to memory and this chip comes with 18 gigabytes of memory by default, but we're gonna bump it up to 36 gigabytes memory. So I get my 32 gigabyte base plus an extra four gigs. So I should be good for a while. And then down to storage. By default, it comes with one terabyte of storage. We're gonna add two terabytes of storage for $400 because two terabytes, again, is the right amount for me. It allows me to have space for the videos I'm working on currently and everything else I have on my Mac regularly and my photos and whatnot. So this really is just is the right amount for me. Now we can choose keyboard, backlit, no other software. So look at that. We're looking at $3,199 for this laptop. And, and yes, that sucks after spending about $3,500 on this laptop earlier this year. So make sure to hit subscribe and watch my videos comparing the M3 Pro and the M2 Max versions of these laptops because I need to help pay for them and I guess sell one. So that's the model I'm going to get, the 14 inch model with the M3 Pro 12 core CPU, 36 gigabytes of memory and two terabytes of SSD for $31.99. And I should have that on Tuesday. So I am pretty excited. And now, like I said at the beginning of the video, a tech rant. I'm tired of tech leakers ruining Apple events for me, really. Aren't you? We're being fed so many stories for weeks or months or even a year or more in advance of what's coming. And then the event comes and we don't get those things and we feel disappointed. We feel cheated. We feel like Apple is screwing us somehow, but it's not Apple. It's them. It's the leakers that are screwing this up for us. There's no reason we shouldn't be super happy with these new MacBook Pros and the 24 inch iMac updates that I totally forgot to mention. But we were told we were going to get more with this weird Monday late night event that was going to be, you know, business hours in, in Asia. And so that's why it was going to happen because we were going to get some kind of crazy game developers or new games coming to the Mac or AAA games that were finally going to be announced or some other crazy partnerships that just didn't happen. Yes, the hardware is here, but there was no partnership or game to go along with it. So now we're disappointed because we were fed the BS that this was probably coming. Then if you look at the updated 24 inch iMac, the USB accessories that are needed to run that machine, there's the mouse or trackpad, and then there's a the keyboard. We were told that they were going to be updated to USB-C finally, and they're not. They are just lightning like they were before, which I will say is pretty odd. But the leakers again have been telling us that they are going to be updated. And then there was the colored matching USB-C cables that were definitely going to be for the iMac accessories. But wait, no, actually, first they were gonna be for the iPhones, in September, but that of course didn't pan out and the colors definitely didn't match. So they were definitely coming for the IMAX, but they weren't because the accessories were not updated. Then for sure, we were getting a new iPad mini. It was definitely coming. This is the sixth generation mini. We were gonna get a seventh generation mini to fix the jelly scrolling and no, that didn't happen either. So now 
going into this event. We were expecting all this other great stuff, and instead, we just got these boring MacBook Pros and a 24-inch iMac and some three nanometer chips. And now, th this sucks. What a waste of time. But instead, we should be happy that Apple is still giving love and continuing to put in a lot of effort and time and money into giving us updated products compared to previous years where they felt pretty stagnant. Now we're getting basically yearly or sub-yearly or whatever regular updates on the Macs, and that is amazing and awesome, and I love it. So I can't wait to get my hands on the new MacBooks. If you want me to get an iMac and check that out, let me know in the comments down below, but I'm not sure if that's something I'm going to get right now, but let me know down below if that's something you really want to see. Now, if you like new tech, you probably like the new iPhone 15 Pro as well. And here's my one month review of that device. Yeah, the Pro Max, check that out. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.